Hello everyone and welcome back. In this playlist I'm going to talk about Eurocode 1993-11 which is about designing of a steel structure, general rules and rules for buildings. This is going to be very basic, just understanding the code and how to uh, use the code for dimensioning the elements. We we'll start with the uh, cross-section classification and we will continue with different elements to be designed according to this code. Assume that you have uh, an indeterminate beam. Let's say we have a fixed fixed beam under the load Q with the length of L. The maximum bending moment in both ends will be QLS squared divided by 12 and the bending moment diagram will be QLS squared divided by 12 at supports QLS squared divided by 24 in the center. When we increase the bending moment the structure can take the load until the maximum bending moment first reaches to yielding bending moment. So in that case we increase the course until we have qy this is relevant to the point that moment maximum will be my as far as a steel is a, an elastoplastic material it means that under a certain condition the bending moment can be increased after reaching to yielding bending moment when we increase the bending moment it starts to be partial plastic until the cross section will be fully plastic which is called M plastic. So it means that uh, the cross section becomes completely plastic and from that moment it doesn't have any rotational capacity and it starts to behave as a plastic hinge. However, not all the cross sections would have such a capability to rotate freely after reaching to their plastic bending moment. So if the beam is indeterminate and you increase the load and the load is in the level of QP, from that moment, the structure starts to behave, for example, in this case, those two uh, rigid supports will become plastic hinge, but still the beam is stable and can take more loads that we can write it down as delta Q with the length of L. And until the bending moment reaches to maximum plastic moment for the other point and uh, one by one we will have more plastic hinge until the structure is not stable anymore. The question is, is the cross section capable of rotate easily after reaching to this QP? The answer is, if the cross section doesn't buckle locally, it can rotate freely. So meaning that the buckling capacity of the cross section in that position needs to be more than bending moment capacity. For this, if we have a look on uh, Eurocode 1993 part 15 plated structures in Annex A, here we can see that the elastic critical plate buckling stress is always a factor of base stress which is given here with this equation a1 k sigma p is a constant value that you can find out according to boundary condition and it's not the scope of uh, our case it's just a number that you need to find it out according to the code or uh, accurate analysis sigma e is always written as the given equation 190,000 times t over b square meaning that it's B and T and K sigma P is uh, determined according to the boundary condition on both end of this plate. Now assume that we have a column which is a hollow section and one of these edges are with the width of B and with the thickness of T. If this part wants to behave as a plastic element it means that the stress needs to be sigma y sigma in the plate we want to be sigma y and from that point we can assume that the force that can be taken by this element 
in the plastic behavior can be sigma y times b times t. To ensure that the local buckling doesn't happen in this part, it means that the resistance of the profile in the local buckling needs to be higher than this value. So the force for the buckling can be calculated by sigma critical of the plate times the area which is B times T. And we always look for having more capacity to take the load rather than buckling locally. It means that Fy needs to be less than F critical. In other words, we don't want the part buckles before it behaves in plastic manner. So sigma y times b times t should be less than now k sigma p times 190,000 t over b square times b times t. And from here, if we simplify the equation, b and t are gone. And from here, b over t square should be less than k sigma p times 190,000 times 1 over sigma y. We can write it down as fy. And from here, b over t needs to be less than s square root of k sigma p times s square root of 190,000 times 1 over s square root of fy. This value is 430. 6 so it means that b over t needs to be less than s square root of k sigma p times 436 divided by s square root of f y in eurocode we have a parameter which is called epsilon and it's s square root of 235 divided by f y it uh, shows what kind of uh, steel grade we are using and 235 is the base, which is relevant to S235. And Fy should be in megapascal. As a result, if I multiply this uh, to S square root of 235 divided by S square root of 235, so this value will be S square root of K sigma P times 436 divided by S square root of 235 times S square root of 235 divided by Fy. And this value is taken as epsilon and it will be 28.4. We can see that according to this equation, uh, to ensure that the cross section can behave as a plastic hinge, the ratio of the free length or the width divided by the thickness should be less than a certain value. And here, epsilon is decreased by increasing the grade of the steel. It means that if you have a better material, then you might need to have a thicker plate to have the cross section able to transfer the plastic uh, behavior. Uh, that's the end of this video. And we went through the basics of how the cross-section classification is done according to the code. Uh, this cross-section classification is almost in every code, British code, American code, and in Euro code. In the next video, I will go through the understanding and classification of the cross-sections according to Euro code. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.